Welcome to another weekly episode of Cyberview. I'm your host, Cybercopy, and I'm here with Hanto Shinobi again. What's up? And uh, we're going to be reviewing the game Smite. So uh, you play this game a lot more than me. I think I only had maybe like 10 to 15 hours total. Do you know how much time you like an estimate? Well, um, I would probably say I'm over a good 50 hours at minimum. Oh, yeah. You're already max level. I think I'm only like 12 or 13. <laughs> yeah, I've been at 30 for a while. Yeah, I'd say more than 50 hours. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Could so uh, let's go ahead and get started on the uh, audio, if you want to. Sure. For the uh, game. Uh, voiceovers, how how did you feel those were? I thought they were satisfactory. They they put a lot of uh, of work into the voices. Every character has their own taunts and everything that they can do. And then, of course... Uh, they have the voice command voiceovers, which do their job. You know, the different things that you should be saying, as well as a few funny phrases that they put in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of I think that kind of touch almost on communication, because like I know like when I was playing, you could press like V and then like V and then uh, B and then it'll be like B right back. And then there's a bunch of other ones like VVR. Yeah, there's a bunch of important ones like calling MIAs, missing in action, or calling to have someone rotate and gank and stuff like that. So, yeah, they definitely did a, a good job at, at all those different ones. And then, like I said, they have silly ones like you can say I'm the greatest and awesome and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, the uh, I like that you can talk in uh, party and in uh, overall chat, right? Yeah, it's pretty similar to, yeah. the, uh, to the Source engine. Yeah, I do like that they don't have, like, actual microphones in there because that's the last thing you want to be listening to is like if you mess up you don't want to hear that dude next to you landing with you yelling at you for a mistake when you know it's, it's not as bad as somebody typing it out yeah i mean of most games that i play that have microphones in them i could probably do without them all together i mean in, except for games where it requires like a whole lot of strategy but even then you know unless it's like an fps or something i could probably do without microphones yeah so yeah voiceovers and communications i think those are pretty strong uh the music and game sounds i don't know i i like the music but i don't think it's anything special i like all the different game sounds though and nothing's really similar all of them have their own unique sounds yeah i didn't really think that the music was anything to you know it wasn't bad it wasn't good it, it fit the genre of the game and it's really only during that main menu i don't think that they really have music anywhere else in the game and then when it comes to game sounds, I think that they definitely fit the abilities and what's going on. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and try to keep this one shorter. Let's jump into graphics then. So as far as quality, you, you were, I think we were both agreeing that it's, it's kind of cartoony looking, right? Yeah, I think, you know, I think for the MOBA genre, it actually has pretty good graphics. I'd say the only thing that really tops it would be like Dota 2 because they definitely put a lot more emphasis on graphics but i don't think it really takes away from the game too much i mean it's kind of cartoony but it's kind of what you expect and with the kind of genre yeah i didn't mind that one too much the only problem i really had with anything in the graphics would be the cinematics and video like i didn't even know that they put cinematics on the website because i i don't go to the website i just launch the game and then i play and then you know whatever's in the game is what i see i don't want to go waste time going online searching for you know, going to the website and then like, oh, look, they have a new champion. It has like a backstory. I didn't know they did that until you said something. Yeah, I mean, they do have a backstory for them and everything. They don't put it into the game. I think it'd be something probably simple enough for them to do. I mean, they could just put it into that little God view menu and just, you know, have you be able to play the, the God reveal video or something like that. But again, I don't think it's, you know, it really takes away from the game because this game, just like most free to play games, isn't really so much about the storyline. True, but like when you have like so many different characters, you kind of you want their backstory. Like I know about most of the gods, but I don't really know about like the some of them that they have in there. Yeah, it's good to know the lore in it, especially since they have it based after real gods and demigods and stuff like that. So it definitely would would emphasize, you know, the genre a bit or their premise a bit more. Yeah. Also, the another problem I actually had with it is the um. You know how when you go to your champ or your gods and you uh, look at their spells, uh, I notice in uh, League of Legends when you do that, it'll actually show you uh, a video of what that spell does. So you don't just read it; you actually visually see what it is. And I think 
that would probably be something that could benefit from this game just because there's so many different spells that you can use and yeah yeah and what's weird is is that they have all those animations that play like on the god select screen like when you're selecting a god but it plays them at random yeah why couldn't they just like so take they could those they could and, do that and move yeah. them over that'd be good yeah and as far as visual upgrades i think um their skin selection for what since it's still in beta right considered yeah. beta even though you yeah. can buy all the skins and everything they do have quite a bit of skins but i think uh, they should add a little bit more to some of the champions. Like the ones I like only have like one other skin where there's like champions that have like three or four skins. Yeah. And I know that a lot of the skins are just recolors. I mean, some of them they've done a really good job on actually changing the skins, like to where they're actually a completely different one. Like they have the Vimana like gangster one and they have the baseball one for, uh, for Hercules and all that different stuff. And the ones where they do like a full reskin on them, I really like because they actually change even their skill animations, their audio and their taunts. All of that is changed along with the skin. But most of the skins that they've released, though the vast majority of them are just a recoloring uh, of the already existing skin. Yeah. I hope it's not just a system in there just to try to like get some extra money coming in. Cause I think it is going to be a free to play game similar to league and Dota where you pay for the extra add ons. It's not exactly pay to win. It's pay to improve yeah, I was, your visuals, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I was actually going to save that for that part of it. But yeah, that's the one thing I actually kind of didn't like about the visual upgrade system because there's a lot of skins, the best skins, I'd say, you can't buy with the favor. You can only get it with the gems, meaning that you have to buy the gems. And what's actually kind of not that great about that is that even if you buy the god pack, which is buying all the gods, you still don't get the skins with that so you still would have to pay separately for the skins that you want as well you can't use your favor to unlock those now that you own all the gods oh so do you think it would be like a better idea if they had like like how they have the god unpack lock or yeah <laughs> uh pack that you can unlock all the gods with like they can have one with all the skins on it too for like another you know 40 bucks or something I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth forty dollars. I mean, you'd have to take a look at how much it would be to unlock all the different ones that you can only get with gems. You know, maybe make it a little bit less than that uh, for, like, say, thirty gods, which is going to be like their standard number. I'm sure they're going to go past that. But yeah, I think that's something to, something to think about. Um, but that's one of the big reasons why I never even considered, you know, buying the god pack is because I couldn't use favor to unlock all the skins. I'd have to fork out cash for that too. Yeah, so you'd end up with a bunch of favor and nothing to really spend it on. Right. Like they they should add something to something else to spend your favor on. Maybe like maybe you could get upgrade uh weapon upgrades or something. Not like like actual like a better weapon, just a different looking weapon. Yeah, or they could do upgraded taunts. There's a lot of room for them to to change that. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the actual gameplay. That's the one I really there's a lot of stuff in there I kind of want to talk about. Uh do you just want to go ahead and start with uh, movement and reaction time? Let's we'll go down the list from there. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I like the movement. I hate how um, when I play Artemis sometimes and you try to chase somebody down, that pa that second it takes you to pause to attack, if you miss that attack, they're gone. And, I mean, that, has, that is something to do with skill-wise, but I don't, yeah, I don't like that it's so hard to not let somebody get away or yeah, something like yeah, that. What it, when it comes to the movement, I definitely like the movement of the game. That's the thing that drew me in, draw, drew me into it. Because I had played League, actually. You were the one that it showed me it. And I really didn't like the aspect of clicking the map in order to move and things like that. I didn't really... Uh, you know, it just seemed a little bit uh, out of place for the genre, even though, obviously, that's the way it was. I mean, it was all coined with, with Dota, and that's the way it was in Dota. But I like how they kind of redid that. They put in the WASD, and they did all of that. You're right, the reaction time is a bit delayed for a lot of the moves. It doesn't bother me too much because of the fact that it adds that air skill to it where you have to lead and stuff like that. So then, you know, it makes that skill gap a little bit greater where if you're a better player, you're going to be able to see it, even with the left clicks, which is what I really liked about the game. Even your, your uh, auto attacks, you have to aim. So you can sit there and dodge someone's auto attacks, and if you're better at juking and you're better at landing your auto attacks, you can you can come out on top even if you have a disadvantage in level and things like that. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the only thing I'd say about the reaction time though is that some of the gods have a far greater delay in their in their um, 
moves than others. And to a point where I think that there's some balancing that needs to be done there. Like, for instance, uh, Ao Kuang. Ao Kuang, is a, he's a good god. I like to play with him. He's fun and everything. But with the delays in his move act, moves activating, it just makes it a lot harder to land his ultimate, his, I think it's his two, where he shoots out the, the slow air blast, you know, those kinds of things. It just makes him a lot harder to use than some of the other caster gods. Yeah, that, that kind of makes me think about it, though. Like, you know how the archers are ranged casters actually have to stop when they attack but i noticed that when you're melee you don't have to stop you can swing and attack which you know i think maybe it'd be a little bit more balanced if they had a little pause too not as long as the archers but a little pause so you know you know they're not just completely running around because i think the melee are a little bit more overpowered in the game especially if they get on a ranger or a ranged well most of the ranged ad have to have to stop to use their skills also yeah so it's actually it's pretty similar in that sense where the uh, the ranged mages and the ranged uh, ads still have to pause for most of their most of their skills to launch. Well, but when it comes to their left clicks, I mean they're still they still can move both of them with their left clicks. Or, you know their auto attacks, but obviously the the ranged ads have a lot higher that they can hit with auto attacks. But then that goes into a different aspect of it where you can actually add AD to casters and you can make their left click higher, but then they're going to, to suffer a loss in damage in their uh, skills. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's something else when you backpedal too. I like that it slows you down so you can't exactly kite people like you can in some other games. Turn around real quick, shoot them, run away. You kind of have to like do a whole 360 when you're trying to move around. Yeah, that's and really it, cool. it punishes... It punches the player a lot who who does that, uh, but then there's also some cool stuff that you can do with the abilities. Like for instance, Ymir, you can actually, without turning around, put a wall in front of you, and because of the delay, and when the wall pops up, it'll actually come up behind you. And there's a lot of moves that you can do that with. You can even do that with uh, Freya's lift. If somebody's right on your back, you can put the you can put her lift right in front of you, and by the time it casts it, it's going behind you and lifting up the person behind you. So it does a whole other error of skill without having to turn around to get that loss of speed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think Skype's messing up a little bit. You keep like your volume just randomly changes. I don't. I hope it's not too big of a problem, but. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move on to controls and key bindings. Honestly, I think I rebound like three or four keys once I launched the game. I didn't like the position, but I liked that I could rebind all the keys that I needed. I think you were saying something about you rebound most of your stuff onto your actual mouse, right? Yeah, I rebound most of my skills onto my mouse so that it would you know, be easier for me to launch them. And yeah, it's definitely really customizable. I mean, they even give you the option of having, you know, rolling your mouse wheel up be a different, you know, something different, rolling it down be something different, clicking it in. So yeah, it's it gives you a lot of options for rebinding. Yeah. As far as team balance, it's it's balanced if your team knows what to pick. But I just hate um, in the normal, uh, what's it called, uh, Conquest games, if one dude gets fed two kills early on, he snowballs so fast, and there's no real way to counter that, and it's just a lost lane at that point. Yeah, I mean, there's there's ways to come back from it, like getting objectives, switching who you're going up against, or maybe even bringing a third person in on the lane. You kind of have to do some, some, you know tactics in order to catch up a lot of people will go and like maybe hit the jungles primarily until they catch up a bit uh so but yeah you're right it does snowball really fast but when it comes to the balance of the game though i mean the only gripe i have about balance is that um when you pick when i mean there's a lot of people that will abuse the cc's in the game there's a lot of cc's in the game and with the the new introduction of the um man i can't even think of the word for it I was talking about it earlier, uh, but in the at the introduction of of you know those canceling move abilities that uh, you can do, work, I think so. yeah, crippling, yeah, with the introduction of the crippling, that makes it even more of a CC based game. I mean, if you have a team that, I mean, if you don't at least have two or three people on your team with a good CC on it, then it can be a war of CCs, and you can easily get dominated just by having them having more CC. Yeah. They do have uh, ways to get out of them, like they have purification beads and then they have the other spells that you can buy. So if you're coming up against a team that is really heavy on like CC, you can just get those spells instead of mana back spells or health back. 
That's true. There is a lot of strategies that you can do with it. There's a lot of god moves that will actually cancel CCs. There's a lot of moves that you can do that will interrupt other gods' uh, moves and things like that. Uh, so again, that that really dips into the uh, aspect of of skill and knowledge of the player. Yeah. As far as uh, let's move on. As far as pay to win, I think we kind of already covered that a little bit earlier. Uh, that's you're really only paying for the champions. You're not paying for any type of bonus. Uh, damage or anything that makes you really overpowered it's just unlocking so i don't think it's really pay to win it's uh, just pay to have fun or pay not to play so much right to unlock the champions yeah and i think i mean when it comes to it i mean definitely you can get an advantage if you have gods earlier on in your levels i mean definitely that can give you an advantage but i think that even the free gods that it gives you and then the fact that it gives you i think five four or five rotation gods, you always have a good de- a good selection of gods to pick from. So even if you were just first starting off the game, I don't think it's going to put you at too much of a disadvantage, and it gives you the opportunity to try out quite a few gods and learn the game. Yeah. Um, as for accessibility, I think that was that's one of the biggest lacking points of this game. I don't know. What are your opinions, are, I guess, on that? Well, accessibility... Well, I, I guess I can start off. Um, what I was going to say is, um, you know how you queue up for a game, and then you get right there, and then if somebody's AFK, bam, you get stuck back into that five-minute queue. Or, you know, whatever. If somebody leaves, you get stuck in the back of the queue. It's not a constantly queue, and it's like every five minutes, it matches everybody up at once. It's not a separate system where it's just like, okay, match this people up to ready. These guys are ready. Match them up. I, I, that's the only thing I don't like because, like, yeah. You can just end up wasting so much time, people just dodging a game, and you'll be stuck there in queue constantly for, you know, 15 minutes. I guess I forgot what accessibility was, so I actually just real quickly changed my score while you were talking, because I was thinking that accessibility was just, you know, talking about the specs of your computer, but the way you have it listed is talking about the specs of your computer in terms of, you know, can you actually play the game with, without having to have a really awesome computer, and then also yeah. the aspects of loading into the game and everything. And yeah, there's definitely some room for improvement when it comes to the queuing system. They've changed it a lot. They've tried to make it to where there's less people that will quit out. You know, they try to give you, like, penalties for quitting out and everything. Thing. And it's not as bad as it was before, where it took a really long time to get into a game, but there's still some room for improvement there. I mean, you still have a lot of instances where, like for instance, the, the thing that really irritates me, irritates me is, it's not very often, but sometimes my game will crash. And if it crashes when I'm on the God Select menu, then instantly I have a half hour of deserter status. Yeah, that mm-hmm. happened to me one time. I even had an error message and everything. I was so angry. I was like, oh, really? I got to wait 30 minutes to play a game now? I'm, I just quit and I didn't, I haven't been back since then. I mean, that's really the only time that you will, you'll get that. I mean, if you, if you get disconnected when you're in a game, it'll just take you right back into the game if you log back in. Sure, you'll probably be at a disadvantage and be behind, uh, but, you know, that's yeah. not a huge. Well, I'm assuming the error code I got had something to do with the champion select, so it's not it wasn't my fault at all, and it could potentially right. happen again. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as weapons, I think I think what we'd probably consider weapons is the weapons in game. There's a lot of different ones you can buy, and each one of them has their own kind of tier. You don't want to just get a bunch of the best weapon attack damage because you want some u- type of utility. Maybe you want a little bit more movement speed, or you want a weapon that slows them. Or you want some type of regen instead of just pure health. So I think the different weapons and armors that you can get is really, really well balanced. There's nothing that's, oh, you have to build this certain way. You can build whatever way you want depending on your play style. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with it. Because like I mentioned earlier, when you're playing with a caster, most people is going to, is going to just all go with, you know, add a damage and play that kind of glass cannon. But then they're going to have those weaknesses. So some people will put a little bit of defense in there. And then you also have the option of actually um, changing it over to where you're focusing on your left click damage and you're using your moves as more of like CCs so that you can get more auto attacks on them. So yeah, I mean, it gives you a lot of different ways to play different characters, and a lot of the abilities uh, actually have CCs and bonuses like that built into them, so you can actually kind of change the gameplay style of your character depending upon the items that you buy as well. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and move on to like the storyline, I guess. Uh, as far as the character storylines, I thought those were really good. Like, I love most of the gods, uh, mostly Norse <laughs> gods, and... Uh... 
probably Greek. Those I like those too. I like that they have the the lore for all of them also. Like every character you click on it, you can read a little description of some of their lore. Right. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with the gods in terms of giving them backgrounds and lore and everything. It's not necessarily that it's matching up too much with the actual lore. It's like they kind of put their own spin on the background of each one of them because, I mean, obviously they're pitting them all together in this big battle, which never happened in any of the folklore of any of the different gods. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where they put their own spin on it. Yeah, I just like that it wasn't like, oh, here's Zeus. Now uh, go Google him to find out you know, more about him. They kind of gave a little bit of story right. about it. And as far as objectives, I would probably... The different types of game modes, I would assume, would probably be where you could score that. Uh, they have what? They have Dominion, the, the game of the day. They have, You said Jousting, the Conquest, uh, Arena, yeah. right? Yeah, they have quite a few game modes in there. They're pretty fun. I mean, obviously they have Conquest, which is what they started out with, which is the normal laning that they have in the MOBA-style games. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, they go from the laning to Arena that they released, and Arena is, is where you're just, you know, it's, it's basically like a big team fight constantly. It does have the minions in there that you're trying to keep from crossing across the map, so you lose score when they go into your base portal. Uh, but for the most part, it's just a team fight. Uh, and then uh, they have uh, domination, which is where you're actually just—it's all about guarding towers and uh, you know, and taking over towers. It's basically like a control point type map. Yeah. And that one's pretty fun as well because that one's more based on defense. It's not about getting ganks. It's about you know defending those control points and taking control points. So yeah. I think it's pretty fun. Kind of like. And King then of the course Hill. they. Have, right. And then of course they have jousting, which you know can be good for training with friends, and then also you know you really want to see who's better between you and another player that can be useful as well and i know that they have a lot of other ones they'd be considering as well yeah uh, want to fight about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh honestly i think the best one they have though is the arena it reminds me a lot of world of warcraft style arena gameplay 5v5 you know it has respawns so you don't have to you know it's not a one time or one death you're dead uh, the games usually average what 10 to 20 minutes which is really nice because like for casual players you can just jump on there jump in an arena kill some people and then you know go do whatever you're new you don't have to go in a conquest game and then risk a game from that could have been 20 minutes all the way to like 55 minutes because it's just so evenly balanced and nobody wants to push hard Right. Yeah, and I, I like all the different game modes. I'd say I probably favor Arena just because of, like you said, that it's easier to jump in and play a game. Uh, and Arena is definitely good, like I said, for training for those team fights and everything. And then, and then Conquest kind of gives you a little bit more training on kind of splitting off and getting those ganks on. You know, it's, it's got a little more strategy to it because yeah. you're roaming around the map and trying to keep up. And the main big difference between those games is that with Arena, you're constantly getting golden experience even if you are just standing inside your base where in conquest you're only going to get experience and gold if you're out there farming so yeah. you know it, it changes the strategies quite a bit well that's another reason i kind of do like smite over the other moba type games is because it has that that arena style game it's not it's not just a cookie cutter thing you know you don't have like league you know you have a ram but it's not really mainstream it's kind of you have to find games for that you can't just click on it and it'll automatically join a game for you and then right. dota you know it's just lane pushing and that gets repetitive and boring and there's a lot of games that already do that so having that arena system and the uh the jousting system so you can actually train with other people is kind of cool i guess the league has something similar to the jousting system too though yeah i like all of it and and people actually have started doing uh a ram and smite as well i mean it's not that there's actually a game mode for it but people will just you know they'll they'll do custom games of conquest yep. and they'll just say everyone stay in that center lane Nobody can port back, which I don't know if that's part of ARAM or not. Yeah, that's how it originally started on League, is everybody was all random, everybody goes the middle, you can't go back and buy unless you die. Right, and and a lot of people actually have started doing that in Smite. It's not actually a game mode, but it's, it's still something that people are doing. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess let's go ahead and uh, give our final scores, but uh, before that, I was going to, I guess we can both just give like what our biggest thing that we liked about the game, then what the least favorite, so... Uh, I guess I'll start. Let's go with my least favorite would have to be the accessibility. I just hate having if somebody dodges, you have to wait in that five minute queue again to get another game. And if if you get really unlucky and three people dodge, you're in queue for like 20 minutes. And I just I hate that. 
they need to fix that. And uh, as far as what I really like, I really like the communication. The fact that they have so many different emotes, kind of like in Team Fortress 2, that lets you know what you want to do without having to type out, I'm going back real quick to buy. You can just go, you know, VVB, be right back. And it says it overall in like the summer voice. So everybody can hear it unless they have their volume all the way down. So, right, uh, and, it all, and it also puts in the chat bar. Yeah, that's, that's true. I gave it a score of an 81, and that's mostly because it's uh, in beta, so I didn't want to give it too much points where it can improve on some of the other places, and uh, the accessibility was really bad. So uh, what are your uh, thoughts? Uh, well, I think the the thing I like the most about the game is is the controls. I think it's the thing that that really puts it aside from other MOBAs out there. It's a thing that that, in my opinion, puts a lot more of a skill gap in there, and it really rewards those that are you know they can aim their abilities, aim their auto attacks, learn the gods, learn the strategies, you know, learn the different skills. I mean, all of that I think really enriches the game a whole lot and rewards the skill of the player a lot more. So I really like that aspect of it. And I'd say the downside for me is the accessibility as well. I mean, I, I didn't even think about that when I was doing the review because I was just going by what your, you know, your scoring system had in it. And I, I didn't remember that accessibility included that as well. And, and I actually changed my score after I had realized that. But definitely it's a big uh, room to grow. Uh, if you're not somebody that likes all the different game modes, then it's just like you said. I mean, if you only like to play arena, then you're going to be having to wait the full length of the of the current queue times. Uh, if you like all the different games, then you might be able to find something that's real quickly going to be starting up if you if you are playing all the different game modes. But if you're one of those people that favors one, then you can have a lot of downtime. Yeah. 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 So my score, I, I gave it is actually an 81 as well after the adjustment that I made. Uh, it ended up being an 81 as well. And I don't think that that's a bad score. I think it's a really good score for a game that's in beta. Uh, they know that there's there's room to improve on the game, and I'd say that I definitely like it overall. I'm going to continue to play it, and I, I think that they have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of growth they're going to be doing. Yeah. All right, so I guess next week we're going to be covering... Uh, did you want to cover Path of Exile or Planet Side 2? I think I'd probably want to go over... Path of Exile. All right. So, yeah, next week uh, you can join us back and we'll be playing Path of Exile. And also, if you want, you can go uh, download, install Smite, uh, head over to the Google Doc and score it yourself. Leave in the comments what you get. You know, this is all about the community project, getting everybody involved. It's not just about our opinions. So, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks.